Hello, today we are looking at the British Drama Toolkit and all the product by Spitfire Audio and it's still relevant to this day. I must admit I only got it maybe two years ago, but it's a fun little one. But the one little downside I see to it, it's very um, genre specific. It's not something I would call bread and butter, but it has a very unique uh, way of working. Um, which is what drew me to it and what probably draws a lot of people to it. They have done another one very similar to this, it's the Contemporary uh, Toolkit, but it's basically uh, for you to almost react instantly to a scene and compose something quite quickly, that sounds quite good. It does that through, especially if you're a keyboard player, um, triggering different samples depending on velocity layers. And when I say samples, I'm referring to ensembles as well, so you can be playing multiple instruments at once with one you know tap of a button really and depending how hard you play will depend if it plays a loud almost melodic sound or something a little bit softer or just textures in the background you'll see what i mean when we jump into the patches itself but i'm going to try and keep this as concise as possible and at least give you an honest overview from some of the outside spitfire audio so this is the paperwork you can read it at your own leisure 169 pounds whatever that converts to Always wait for a sale, I always say this, but you can get this a lot cheaper. Uh, one mic position, one mix, you've got woodwinds and strings. It's, as I said, this little ensemble e sort of patch. Uh, you can see where I got the inspiration for my lighting from. <laughs> um, but yeah, British Drama Toolkit. Um, I'll let you read that at your own leisure. As you can see, there's the panel overviews, which you're about to see now. It works within Contact Player, uh, not its own dedicated plugin, although I won't be surprised if they start transferring over um, some of their products because everything recently has been its own plugin. But I must admit, I do love Contact. It's a great little um, sampler. Anyway, so I've already got the first kit actually loaded. As we can see, uh, there's multiple different types. You've got the main ensemble and you have the individual instruments. There is an advanced, always look in the advanced, always worthwhile because there's always lots of fun different features in there like accented, there you go, notes, and then we've got individual techniques. So if you really wanna go into the nitty gritty, there's a lot there to actually go through. And as I said, we're gonna brush over a lot of this, but try and give you a good overall picture um, within a limited time. We don't wanna go on for hours. So main, we've already got that loaded. As you can see at the bottom here, we've got a number of different articulations from too, too long, string loud, tutti long string accented, and just a ton of different things, different features. Mic position wise, we have a close and decatry, which is funny because didn't they say they only had one or one mix and one, one mic, one mix, but it says close and decatry. That's a bit contradictory. Um, but that's the main window there. So you got your mic, reverb, expression, um, but this is the window you kind of want open because you'll see right now when I hit some notes, depending how heavy I hit these notes will depend on what's triggered. So you can already see there what I mean. While you really do, I want to say, need to be a keyboard player or at least know your way around the keyboard enough. So um, if you're wanting to do this live, of course, you can go into the nitty gritty in the MIDI and or even just go back after you've played something and kind of work with it and line everything up a bit. But even I kind of struggle with this one sometimes to get it how, exactly how I want. but it does have a beautiful release, which I really like about it. And it kind of joins really nicely together. But that one was the, what, texture strings and loud woodwind. The standard one, the one that actually loads with it straight off the bat, main, and this is this one.
So you're already seeing there as well, depending where I'm playing, depends on what instrument kind of works. So some of the higher parts, we have the strings, other bits, oboes, the flutes, play the main melody bit. You've got to be careful crossing over because sometimes you can be playing a really loud bit with the string and you have this almost really beautiful string melody coming over and then suddenly the oboe just takes over, which sometimes can work. Um, but overall, as you can see, a couple taps, a couple little plays there, you have this ensemble working together. What do we actually have instrument-wise with this? Well, you can see from the different patches that we've got violins, violas, cellos, double bass, bass clarinet, clarinet, flute, and piccolo. So you've got this woodwind, string, collaboration, smaller, it's not a big ensemble. Fast-paced is not really where this is going. Uh, I don't think you could really play anything fast. If something is more for the slow, um, sadder scenes, I've kind of felt it work, or dramatic scenes um, in the sense of, oh, maybe somebody's died and you know, it's sad. There we go, somebody died, it's sad. So slower, the triggers, or I should say the releases are really nice when you're going between notes. Works really nicely, beautiful legatos, that's the word I was looking for, legatos. And the natural vibrato as well, you're not having to control the vibrato, but you have this really natural sound that comes across. Just listen to that sample. And I think you even have the bowing as well there. Which comes across really nicely. And then if we move into the softer bit, it's kind of the same sample, but a little bit quieter and then texture. But that's moving now into our oboe. Maybe a little bit of string. Um, but can be a bit finicky uh, and I find sometimes you can spend too much time just trying to play different things and an hour has gone by and you've got nothing but you've got a load of things that sound great but nothing that you find works but it is a fun one if you've got a picture if you've got a tight deadline just sit there looking at it if you can and just playing over the top um, if it's drama but again as I said it's very genre specific I can't really relate this to um, you know, a happy-go-lucky indie pop song. Um, you could try, you would struggle. Um, what else? There are some really fun ones I really like. I think it's this one, it's the textured woodwinds. You get these uh, really nice uh, drones. Ah, here we go. I think it's called overblowing. There's just little bits that stand out now and then. You got that. But as I said, you can literally play with this all day and <laughs> get nowhere. Here's another one. It's an alternate version with the strings. And as you can see there as well, you're varying between, this one's just textured and soft. We've got some that have that loud patch as well, right at the top end. You really do have to thump it sometimes, as you might have heard if I had not cut out that sound. Um, but a lot of soft. This is the main ensemble. It's a little bit on the s well, small, it's in the name ensemble. Smaller side you will find. Um, but you do have these lovely what, bass and clarinet chatter. Ah, these are the ones I was trying to talk about earlier. just fun little pieces that add just a little bit of detail in the background. For those bits in between tracks where you don't want this big piece but you just need a little bit of excitement musically in the background and there is a forte.
see what I mean? Sometimes I'm just not hitting it quite enough. My pinky, my poor pinky. <laughs> um, fun though. Flute and piccolo longs. As you're probably seeing, there is tons of articulation-y patches within this and within every single one. Main had a ton, this one's got a ton. And as I said, I'm not gonna go through all of them because we'll be here all day. I'm trying to pick some of my favorites, but the main one is basically all the instruments combined and different variations of them. The ensemble tries to break it down into, well, this is just the flutes and piccolos. This is the bass and clarinet chatters. This is just the flute and piccolo chiffs. This is something I do love about this library and I do use or try to use in pieces where required and as I said those in between track moments is these chatters, these chiffs and the um, these bits here, yeah chatters, they're really fun and they're hard to come by, then there's something you can't really create um, through a bread and butter sort of patch, you do need something like this for that sort of thing. So these are more the things I kind of use this for. Now, if we go more, even more specific, so you go from the main, which is everything, to the ensembles, which is breaking it down into smaller groups to the actual individual instruments themselves. So we have a violin with just the longs, long accents, we have just the softs. So if you don't want the loud bit, or you just want the loud bit, the long louds, and then these long harmonics. The harmonics I, I do love, but you really do have to go all the way up here. And what's nice about these harmonics is they're not too sharp. And Spitfire never fails with their quality. These really do deliver on that beautiful harmonic sound that's not too harsh and not too resiny. Um, but you've got to go right to the top of your keyboard for that. So you do have a breakdown of all the instruments. If you want to just a solo, you can just go into this. Maybe I just want the long ones going to the mains. It's not really a short version. So you can hear there, there's a limit. So you kind of make a faster paced melody work. Uh, forte if you just want that really loud one. That's a beautiful vibrato. Round robin wise, I can't, does it actually tell us how many we have? Um, I don't know, although this is a good time to actually toggle between that and the close mic. And then you've been hearing the other one. So you do have a bit of distance on that and you can just mix them together as well to create a unique sound. If we take the reverb completely off. And there you have it. So that is the violin. Uh, you will see something very similar throughout the other instruments as well. Longs, long accented, long soft harmonic. So it's very consistent through our. To me, the sound is a little bit narrow for me. I'd like a bit more of a stereo field um, with the individual ones, but as a whole, they work beautifully. So I guess I can kind of understand how some of them individually are quite tight. Uh, moving on to the cellos, we'll just do the long main patch because I think that gives a good broad idea of it.
what is nice about this as well is you can just press a key and see what happens. Just quite literally do that and you just get these beautiful sounds, some bits standing out, some bits you know, ebbing and flowing, almost like a river, um, is a good way of describing this. So it is a nice one just to hear a note, but not bread and butter. So that's the cello. You have a double bass as well, which is rather interesting. Uh, and a little bit more here as well. We've got these long accented, long accented, what's this one? Alternative, long accented, and it's just long alt, long accent. So a lot of alternative long accents there. What's the difference? Helps if I actually play within its range. I'm not seeing much difference between them personally. Long soft, long soft alt. Okay, slightly on this one, harmonics with a double bass. Very haunting sound. I must admit, I do like uh, double bass harmonics because they kind of fall in that mid-range, not like right up there where harmonics usually are, but they give this beautiful, soft, soft, but scratchy um, and haunted sort of sound. Um, so for a double bass, you do have some very unique uh, sounds, I feel. Uh, I don't know about the alts, though. There's don't seem to be enough uniqueness between them. Bass clarinet, uh, I love the chatters. I'm a sucker for the chatters on this. Um, and that's quite consistent out the woodwinds on this. They do a lot of chatters, which I would love to see on uh, some of their more bread and butter libraries, just an extra articulation with some chatters. Because you have so many different types of articulations on that, just adding a chatter wouldn't be too bad. Because I, I do like my chatters. Uh, have I said that already? <laughs> It's a very playable library, this. So that's your bass clarinet, bass, bass clarinet. Uh, moving into our clarinet. Fun, beautiful, and just gorgeous transitions between notes. So that's the long, so you've got the sauce fortes and the chatters, so always fun. And moving into our flute. Uh, again, we actually have these long chips. Beautiful textures. Um, some quieter ones. Long alt. Uh, with the chitters at the bottom, long, just just standard, and well, we've already played that one. Long, loud, just a nice. Melody sort of patch. And finally, last but not least, we have our piccolo.
And of course, we have a little bit of everything there as well. Uh, my favorite, the... Little chiffs. <laughs> uh, I love that sound, It, as I keep saying. Um, but advanced, let's look actually at some of these. So of course, all the individual articulations. So if you actually wanna look within the main, you can just load them as well, especially um, if you're short for RAM, although this isn't what I would call a really RAM heavy um, instrument. I think the main one, if we load that up very quickly, uh, yes, I do wanna make the changes, is only, it's only coming up as about 44.28 megabytes. Uh, if I load both microphones, double that's 88. So it's not a heavy one and you can turn ones off. So if you really are wanting to cut back on RAM, I guess you could load it individually. So they're all there, or if you just want to have a read and see what you actually want, whatever to play with. Accents, so we have these um, different libraries as well uh, within it, um, but it's, well, I'll show you what I mean. They're just mains with accents, is kind of how it looks. Um, these don't, do these come in the main patch? I'm a bit confused there. Is it just the accented ones? Because if let's have a look, because the main texture woodwinds, loud strings, accented. Does that actually come in the main? Because if it does, I honestly don't see the point in the advanced ones. 2T, 2T, textures, winds. No, so if you want more, accented versions you need to go into the advanced and there's all the accents there so you have violins violos cello double bass no accented woodwind instruments it would seem string ensemble long accented there you have it if you want accents go into the advanced um and individual articulations there so hopefully I've given a rough overview and a taster of some of these sounds in here, and at least from somebody who can kind of play the piano, <laughs> um, how it kind of sounds when you're doing it and you're not someone like Hans Zimmer or Christian Henson sitting at a piano and playing it, um, can be finicky. Uh, and it, it has this sort of sound that fits in a box. Um, and if that works for you, great. It might not work for everybody, um, but it's there. It's not the most expensive one at the world, 169. You can probably get it down to just over 100 on some sales. Um, it's fun. If it's what you're going for, if this is the sound you compose a lot of, or if you want some chips <laughs> and have some money to spare. But there you have it, it's the British Drama Toolkit. Um, it's one of those that kind of sits in the middle for me. It's like, yes, but no, I see its purpose. Do I use it a lot? No, I don't. Um, what do I use every day? BBC Symphony Orchestra. It's uh, one I bash on a lot about. I don't think I've talked about it in a while though in a video. Um, I'm all for that bread and butter. This, eh, it has its niche. It has its uses 100%. But thank you so much for watching. Hope this has been helpful. I'll see you in the next video.